Good morning, church. I can't tell you how good it is to be here with you today, but thanks for coming out today. Uh, as folks continue to uh, trickle in from the uh, coffee truck, we uh, hope you will uh, welcome them warmly, as warmly as we can under the circumstances. And if you didn't find it on your way in, the coffee truck is at the end of the Reiner Education Building on the east end. Uh, it's on the house, uh, thanks to some folks from our church who enjoyed it last week and said they wanted to sponsor it. So we welcome you today to worship and invite you to uh, uh, enjoy that opportunity in lieu of the uh, fellowship time that we have uh, set aside for the rest of this summer. Uh, we want to point out to you that on our website, our newly designed website, if you scroll to the bottom, there is a section called the connection card and you can fill that out if you want to. Last week I asked you to let us know that you were in worship and uh, hadn't realized what that would mean, even with a small crowd, uh, the number of uh, emails we got. So let me just say, if there's a message you want to get to us, Connection Card's a great way to do it. If you need to update contact information or uh, any of that kind of thing, uh, or get a message to the office, Connection Card's a great way to do it. You don't have to tell us for today uh, that you were here at the 930 service, but we thank you for those who did last week. And we just want you to know that connection card is there, and it works. Uh, we also want to mention to you that today uh, we have, for a long time, been receiving prayer requests through the website. And uh, for the foreseeable future, we're asking you to use the website to, under the worship tab, click on prayers and, or prayer requests, and you can fill out a prayer request that way. We do get those. Uh, we read over them. We pray for them. Uh, they become the basis for our prayer page the next week. And so we want to uh, encourage you to do that. If you brought your own piece of paper and your own writing instrument, you may fill out a prayer card today and drop it in the offering plate. But there are no prayer cards uh, currently uh, or pens in the pews. And uh, we're just trying to do those things that will help us uh, to be safe and allow us to worship together. Chris? So last week, Pastor Jeff said, drinks are on the house, which we thought we'd never say in church. Yeah. <laughs> now this week, you sort of just said BYOP, yeah. bring your own paper there, and pen. So there you go. <laughs> I don't know where we're headed here. So. <laughs> <laughs> a couple quick announcements on your way out. If you hadn't already got one, there is an announcement sheet in the back. Uh, we aren't doing paper bulletins for obvious reasons, but if you desire announcements in a paper form, they are on the back. And during this time of pandemic, Pandemic, whatever we want to call it, isolation. Uh, not that we didn't know the audiovisual team's value before, but we've really, really, really come to appreciate the audiovisual team. How about a quick round of applause for Dave? <laughs> for Dave and his team of volunteers, um, this is a call to any of you that might be here this morning or live streaming with us. Um, if you'd like to participate in this uh, much needed ministry, um, please see Dave, shoot him a message, see him after service, or send an email to the office and we'll make sure you are connected with them because we're always looking for, for volunteers for our audio-visual team. Also, our ice cream bus continues this week at the neighborhoods of Fleetwood, Blandin, Leesport, and Hamburg. This Thursday evening, you will get an email if you are, have your current email updated through the connection cards. Uh, okay. We'll be doing that through the summer, so if we haven't gotten to yet, please be patient. And um, as we just mentioned, we will be continuing to do live stream, our devotional videos, and continuing to find ways to, to use technology to be with you and be connected during this time and into the foreseeable future. So again, thank you for, for being here. Now it's our honor as we move into welcoming a new member into our family here at West Lawn. So we're going to invite you to join with us in the baptismal covenant, which will appear on the screens behind us. It was a privilege. Uh, one of the highlights for me of our online worship was when we got to receive two, three, four, five, six new members uh, while we were in a virtual only uh, worship experience. And, and I thought that was just such a wonderful sign of, of the commitment and, and of the future of the church, even in a time when we weren't so sure about the present. And we are delighted uh, to welcome today a, a new member. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, 
we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. It is my honor to present a candidate for church membership, Stephen Snyder. Just now I'd like to invite Steve and his family and, and sponsors to, to come on up. Six years ago, Craig Seda invited Steve to join him in preparing meals for West Lawn Wednesday. Steve has been an enthusiastic helper ever since. When not helping in the West Lawn Kitchen, Steve works at Empire Wrecking as a truck driver and equipment operator. Steve also is a volunteer firefighter and fire police for Spring Township. When he finds time to relax, he enjoys going to the shore, fishing, and generally being on the water. He also loves spending time with his parents, mom, Cindy, and dad, Dan, and sister and brother-in-law, Sam and Kevin. Steve resides in the West Lawn area and usually worships at the 9.30 a.m. service. Welcome, Steve. And Steve has members of the, uh, the kitchen crew, the Tuesday night prep group here, uh, in support of him and some others who have gathered here today uh, as a cheering section. So, Steve, we welcome you today. On behalf of the whole church of Jesus Christ, it's our privilege to ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, answer, I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, answer, I will. And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, would you respond, we do. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news. And live, and live according, according to the example, example of Christ. Christ. We, we will, will surround him with a community of love and forgiveness, forgiveness that, that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We, we will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Steve, we invite you to remember your baptism and give thanks. As a member of this congregation, West Lawn United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. If so, answer, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend this person to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase his faith, confirm his hope, and perfect him in love. Would you respond with me? We give, give thanks, thanks for all, all that God has God already given, given you, and we, we welcome, welcome you in Christian love. love. As members, members together with you in the body of Christ, Christ and in the West Lawn United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. May the God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace now and forever. Amen. 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 Steve, we present you with a uh, certificate of membership. And if you would welcome Steve as our newest member. <laughs> Friends, we invite you to stand and join us as we worship God in song. Well, good morning, church family. It's so great, yet also kind of weird to be back together. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This has been such a challenging time for all of us, but I mean, just to see God's faithfulness through the season. So I'm just going to lift up a prayer really quick. God, we love you. We glorify you. We praise your name this morning. Lord, let songs well up in our hearts from the songs that we sing this morning, God. We're here to meet you, God. Meet us here.
question is come on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kings will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? And our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's a roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. And our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before him. Oh, 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 yeah. So open up the gates, and go away before the king. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord? Oh my, yeah. Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the land that was saved for the sins of the world. His blood brings the chains, and every knee will bow before the lion. Oh, every knee will bow before it. We sing this together, church. You can stop. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Sing this over your battles today. Yeah, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh. Scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, from the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground. For they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. 
Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. together. We've seen him move these mountains in front of us. And I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe I see you do it again. I see I see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe I see you do it again. I see you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. 
still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. Yeah, this is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. God, we give thanks this morning that you've never failed us and you won't start. You will never fail us, Lord. We love you so much and we thank you for that truth. You are so good to us. Amen. Amen. The, uh, the, the online worship only was how much so many of you enjoyed the children's time. So uh, we have it today. It's actually a recorded version, but Lori Gentis has a, a little message for us at this time. Good morning, Westlawn family and everyone tuning in from home. I'm Lori Gentis, coordinator of children's and family ministries here at the church. How many of you know what this is? Let me give you a hint. This is a marble maze, and it's one that I had as a child, in fact. And I used to love to watch the marbles make their way down the track, one right after another. As long as the marbles stay on the track, even with all the drops and turns, they'll make their way safely to the end. What if we pretended just for a moment that we were the marbles and that God's word was the track? I don't know about you, but having clear guidelines to follow seems a lot easier than just trying to roll our way through life. We might end up under a sofa cushion or sucked up by the vacuum. In Psalm 119, which is the song that we've been studying, and this is the last week that we're covering that one, it puts it another way in verse 105. It says, your word is like a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. In other words, the Bible shows us what to do, just like a light shows us what steps to take on a dark path. For those of you that are worshiping with us in person today, you'll find a little flashlight in the bag that you got when you came in. And we've also included a paper with a fun activity for you to try, and it's about reading the Bible by the light of your flashlight. So that's something that we can also get to you at home if you'd like to get a copy of that. Speaking of our Bibles, we know that God's Word shows us what to do, but the Bible is a really big book, and we might not always know where to find the specific verse that we're looking for. So Jesus made it simple. In Mark 12, 28 to 31, he summarized all the instructions of the Bible in just a couple of verses. Ready? Wait for it. Love God and love people. More specifically, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment than these. So back to the marble maze. If you want to stay on track, just like my marbles, love God, love people, and read your Bible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word to guide us. Please help us to follow it throughout our lives so we know what to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lori. And together, let us join together in prayer. As if you were here last week or you tuned in, our prayer time usually would involve you coming forward, but we're just asking you to refrain from that, uh, to be in an attitude of prayer as I, as I lead us in prayer from your pews. Holy God, we were yours before we drew breath, and still we will be yours when the pulse of life ceases. In every fragile, reckless moment, we belong to you. We pray for all of your people of the world. You have created one human family to live and flourish in peace. 
Give us the wisdom to order our world that all may find shelter, sustenance, and love. And we pray for your church. You have given us the gift of the indwelling Christ that your church may be faithful and loving and wise. Give us strength, strength to follow your son until all are reconciled by his grace and love. This morning we pray for those who are sick, who suffer need or are in danger. Together we lift up those dealing with COVID-19, and cancer treatments and heart issues, lung issues, cystic fibrosis, whatever affliction, Lord, they are undergoing, we ask you to heal them. We pray for those that we name and those that remain silently upon our hearts. We pray for Megan and Ken, Mike and Judy, Jonathan and Corinne, Steve, Verna, Kim, Keith, Lucy, Patricia, Tammy, and for Charlotte. You have made us for a noble purpose, to love and create for each other at every turn. Give us the compassion and the skill to love our neighbor and to seek the well-being of all those in need. Let us take a moment, Lord, as we lift up to you those that have died. Prayers for those continuing to grieve the loss of their loved ones. For the Marshall family, for Janet Heimbach and her family at the passing of her son. For Randy Hill and his family at the passing of his sister's husband's sister's husband, Bill, and the family of Jody Shive in the passing of her mother. God of all, you call us into communion and the worship to glorify you and to sing your praise. Make us one with the saints who have found their eternal rest in you. May you continue to teach us to act, to tend to the world you love, to sow more than we reap, to heal more than we wound, to make room for others as you have made room for us. All this we pray in Jesus' holy name, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I want to say a word of thanks and appreciation to you uh, at home and to you who are present, to all who have uh, given so generously and faithfully to the church to keep our doors open, to keep our ministry happening feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, sharing God's word through, throughout this pandemic and the stay-at-home orders. Uh, we want to thank you for that and, and, uh, and we'll in just a few moments be receiving your offering. But before we do, I want to share uh, a, a little video clip with you from Gene Curry. Gene is the chairperson of our endowment committee who has a heart not only for our church and ministry today, but uh, for ensuring for the future of our church in the years ahead. So if you would turn your attention to the screen. Good morning. I'm Gene Curry. My wife, Fran, and I have been members of this church for quite a few years. And my message this morning is not a spiritual one. Instead, it's a practical one, as I like to talk a little bit about the expenses of running this church and its programs. You might be surprised to know that on a weekly basis, every week, it costs $29,450. That is a little over $4,200 every day of the week. Now we all help with these expenses with our weekly and our monthly giving. Um, but we can also help with these expenses by Remembering the church with a, an estate bequest. Remembering the church in our wills is a way to give them some money for these expenses when we no longer need the money. Or a very simple way of leaving some money to the church is to change your beneficiary uh, and include the church in your life insurance, annuities, IRAs, 401k plans, 
simply say something like 10% to West Lawn, 90% to my church. Another option, which is available for seniors, is a gift annuity. Let me give you an example of that. Let's take a couple in their mid-70s, 75 husband, 75 wife. They have a $50,000 CD that's rolling over. They go to the bank and they find that they can get 1% or 2%. Well, that's $500, $1,000 a year. If they were to get a gift annuity, their income that would be guaranteed for life for both of them is $2,300 a year, which is equivalent of 4.6%. And $1,973 of that would be tax-free. In addition, they would get a tax deduction of $17,451 because when both the husband and wife have died, whatever's left in this account will then go to West Lawn United Methodist Church for their expenses. As chairman, of the endowment committee, I'd be happy to meet personally with anybody in the church who's interested in receiving more information on naming the church in their will or their beneficiary or getting an illustration to show how this would work for them, keeping in mind that the minimum for this is about $10,000. One final thought, you can make a difference here at the church by doing a be, uh, an estate bequest where you're leaving money to the church that you no longer have need of. So a couple of things I would point out. If you didn't think we need help with AV, you saw the way I run the camera, sort of herky-jerky. But uh, So we're always looking for help. Second, um, I would argue with Gene on only one point. Uh, I think this is a spiritual matter, and Cheryl and I feel it's an act of faith when we put the church in our will. And uh, he's challenged us to think in, in other ways as well of how we can support God's work through this church. I hope that you'll pray about that as well, and I hope that you'll give freely and generously and lovingly as we support God's work here and now through our tithes and our offerings as the band leads us in worship. Church, let's stand and sing. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm going to see. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. The singer's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he wins. not backing down from any giants Cause I know how this story ends Yes, I know how this story ends I'm gonna see I'm gonna see your victory I'm gonna see your victory For the battle belongs to you 
Church, let's declare this. You take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. What the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it. For The battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For oh, the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For oh, the battle belongs. God, I just hope that those words that we just sang would be our prayer. That we would see a victory over this virus that surrounds us, that has permeated our lives. I declare that we would see a victory in your name. I pray that we would see a victory over oppression. That we would give thanks and praise for people who have had excellent times during this time whose lives have been unaffected and God I especially pray for people whose lives have been turned upside down for one reason or another that they would see victory in you and that we as your people they would see a victory in us by how we act and, and how we love our neighbors and it's in Jesus name I pray all of this amen thank you Greg and, and to the band great job so uh, we, uh, we're listening to the words of Jesus when we hear, as Chris read to us from Matthew 13. Uh, he's talking to, well, we'll get into that in just a minute, but um, as he's talking, uh, it occurred to me that there are a number of ways you could talk about the parable that you've heard already today, but, um, but I remember 
when I was a newlywed, I, I made a lot of mistakes when I was a newlywed, but uh, <laughs> we've all made mistakes, but, uh, but my wife used to get mad at me, and she would say something like, are you, or she would say, can you hear me? I'd say, I hear you, I'm just not listening to you. You can he- imagine how bad that went over. And, uh, and then there are times when she'll say, would you go look for something? Go get me something. It's here or there. And I'll say, I can't find it. And she would say, you look, not up here, but you look, you search. You search like a man. You listen like a man, which is what we call selective hearing. You search like a man, which is not diligently. You, she would probably say, I clean like a man, which is not thorough enough. So there have been a number of times when, when I have clearly not listened to her and, and to others, I must admit. Sometimes I get so wrapped up in myself or whatever I am uh, uh, doing, I, I practice what she likes to call selective hearing. Um, some of you, I, I confess and apologize, some of you have, have talked to me from time to time and I may not have always been as attentive as I should. Sometimes I'll leave the office door open to my study across the the breezeway and people will come in and I may be at the computer and I'm typing or doing whatever and and they'll knock on the door I'll say come on in sit down and 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 then I notice after a, a long pause that they're not saying anything well they're not saying anything because they're waiting for me to to stop what I'm doing so I can pay attention because my, my natural inclination is wanting to multitask, which I don't do well. But t- keep on typing, finish what I'm doing while, while they're talking. But they're talking, and I'm hearing, but I'm not listening. You know what I mean? Sometimes we don't really hear or listen to the things that are said to us. Some of you are familiar with a book came out many years ago now about, about uh, Seattle's uh, Pike Peak. Uh, no, Pike Place, excuse me, Pike Place Fish Market. Anybody re- re- read the book Fish? Anybody read? <laughs> okay, I- I'm, I'm a little shocked. It's a short book. But anyway, in that book, they, they came up with, uh, with four philosophies that can make you uh, a better person and more successful in whatever you're doing in any avenue of your life. And the first one was, was really convicting. And the first one was be there, be there, be present. Not, not just sit at your desk and type at your computer but while someone is, is, is sitting down and waiting to talk. Not just saying, yeah, I hear you, but, but, but really listening, being fully present for that person. And when they want to talk, just look them in the eye, listen to them while they're talking, pay attention, be fully present for them. I, I believe that would serve us all really well because Jesus talks in, in the parable that we've heard today, he, he really raises two questions. And, and the one is, who is really listening to him? Not just hearing the words. We've heard the words. Chris read the words. But who's really listening to what Jesus might want to say and speak into our lives? And, and, and if you and I have come to a place where, where we believe in Jesus and want to share that with others... Uh, I just hope that maybe today something can encourage you uh, because I I know that not everybody always listens to the things we say either. Now, to be clear, sometimes we don't say it very, uh, very forcefully. Sometimes we don't say it with a lot of passion. And sometimes the words we say are betrayed by the things we do. And if you're living one life and you're talking another, people are not going to listen. But... Jesus didn't have that problem. Jesus uh, was a, a very powerful speaker, uh, obviously so. Many of his words were, uh, were put to uh, paper and, or papyrus and, and handed down even to this day. Jesus talked in parables. Uh, he, he taught many of the, the stories that we remember, the Good Samaritan and, and so many others we remember because he, he told stories. If you've been around this church long enough, you may remember uh, the name Reverend Rollin T. Reiner. Reverend Reiner served as the pastor of this church for 40 years, from 1942 to 1982.
but you may not know uh, as much about his wife, Betty, and, and, and I don't either, but, but I do know this. Betty was a wonderful storyteller. Betty was actually a member of what I think was like the storytelling society or something like that, where people would get together and they would share stories and, and, and help one another hone their skill at storytelling so that they could do it more effectively, so they could make the point they wanted to make. Betty told some stories that, uh, and not just to children like we have in our, our children's times, but uh, I can remember a story she told in, in an adult Sunday school class here one time, and, and I still remember that, and I still share that story from time to time, because stories have a way of impacting us. They, they speak not only to our head knowledge, but they speak to our, to our hearts, and it's why we tell a lot of stories here. Uh, hopefully true stories. But Jesus was a great storyteller. He taught in parables, and he taught today. Uh, he recorded, Matthew recorded a, a story that he told in the 13th chapter of Matthew. Uh, we call it the parable of the sower. You can think of it as Jesus being the, the sower, sowing the good seed of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and in that sense, the question that we that I want to ask today is, who really is listening when Jesus shares the good news? Because Jesus said uh, there are four different types of soil upon which the seed can fall. Maybe you remember it. Uh, some of the seed fell on the path. I've been uh, wrestling with, uh, with yard issues for years now. Uh, there was a stretch, still is a stretch, of, of grass or where we would like there to be grass uh, it, near the house um, at where Cheryl and I live and right next to the driveway. I don't know when they built this house. I wasn't around uh, in 91, but, but I'm thinking they probably have a lot of uh, construction waste up in that area because it just doesn't seem to grow. And, and, and quite honestly, we haven't uh, done a lot with it. But I have, on occasion, uh, tried to stir up the soil a little bit and sprinkle some seed down there. But I can tell you this, all of the seed that landed on the driveway did not grow. In fact, what happened to it? The birds snatch it up and eat it and take it away. Uh, unfortunately, the seed that, that fell sort of in that little corner didn't do too well either. But in the back of the house, a couple of years ago, we discovered we, uh, as the house settles, the, pr the ground settles, that it's now sort of running toward the house, which creates water problems. So we got some topsoil, put it in around there, built it up so it's fresh topsoil, and, and then we sprinkled seed there. Again, I can tell you, the seed that fell on the patio did not grow. But the seed that fell in the good soil, it has. Jesus said, there will always be some seed that falls on the path. And when it does, it's like the birds will come and eat it and carry it away. Jesus went on, if you don't like my interpretation of Jesus' parable, you can go yourself and read Matthew 13, verses 18 and following, because he not only told the parable in verses 1 to 9, he then explains the parable a little later. He said, when the seed falls on the patio... When the seed falls on the driveway, when the seed falls on the path, it's like the evil one comes and, and snatches it away. And so it will not put down roots in our hearts or in our lives. Jesus was talking about those people, people like you and me perhaps, who, who for whatever reason, maybe, maybe something's happened in your life, that, uh, that you just can't wrap your head around. Maybe something's happened that, that you are so mad about God uh, or so mad at God about this episode that, that you've just hardened your heart. And it happens. There, there are people who have told me stories that, uh, that, that just break my heart sometimes, especially when it's, when it's when Christians or the church have harmed believers or people wanting to believe. In any of those cases, when we, when we harden our hearts, our, our lives become like the path, and, and the seed cannot penetrate it. The good news cannot, cannot uh, 
put down roots and and the transforming power of God will not will not take uh, or have an impact Jesus said when the seed falls on the path it's like when the evil one keeps us from following following Jesus he went on to say there are other seeds uh, like the seeds that fell on the rocky soil where the where the ground is is really shallow and and, and it doesn't have much hope. Uh, he said, of the seed that falls on the rocky soil, it's like there's no depth to it. And so when personal trials come, when, when, uh, when the sun comes out like the July sun that we're experiencing, it, it just scorches it because there's no depth to, um, to the growth. There's no depth for the seed to sink down into the soil. Friends, we need to be clear, I think. Uh, we should be clear that when we say, come Lord Jesus, uh, when we give our, our lives to Jesus, when we say yes to the, the vows, as Steve said today, when we say yes to Jesus, we, we ought to be offering ourselves in, in, in surrender to Jesus. A few years ago, uh, 2011 to be exact, we, we passed a resolution, a, a motion here at the church, and, and it changed the way we do leadership since two, uh, from 2012 on. And now we have a leadership team, and we ask certain things of our leadership team. We, uh, one of those things is that everybody on the leadership team should be intentionally growing in their faith. You see, if you're not intentional about growing in your faith, you're going to, you're going to be trying to plant seed in shallow soil if you don't intentionally grow in your faith don't think you're going to walk home today and your bible's going to jump off the shelf and open to a page and trip you so you fall and have to read it it doesn't work like that we have to make a decision to tune in online or to show up in church we have to make a decision each day to open our bibles to read and to pray we have to make a decision that we want to grow so we go to bible study or sunday school we have to make decisions to intentionally grow in our faith because if we're not growing in our faith if we're not nurturing the seed that jesus has planted if we're not nurturing the faith that we claim we want or have then when the times get tough, and there will always be tough times. When times get tough, it will be like we are in rocky soil, and the sun will come down and beat down on us, and we will wither and dry and burn up. When trouble arises, we will not be prepared. And so we don't want to be that thin lacking depth rocky soil the third seed or the third ground that he talks about receptive is this that some seed fell among the thorns now, i know i know more about thorns than anything else because we've got thorns and weeds in in our yard and and it doesn't take long for them to grow up uh, sometimes you have the best of intentions one of the things cheryl and i did early in the in the quarantine was we would go out uh, at certain times of the day and we were weeding, and I was going to, uh, uh, to <laughs> sounds funny, but going to the dump where uh, you can dro drop off your yard waste, and, and the township was providing mulch, and, and I, I was bringing it back by the, by the buckets full, and we, we got the whole thing around our house done, and it was great for about a day and a half. And then those weeds, if you don't dig down and get the, if you don't get the roots, man, they, they're always there. The thorns are there, to, the weeds, to, to choke out the good stuff that you, that you want to see uh, thrive and prosper. Friends, there are, there are thorns and weeds in all of our lives, and you need to understand, I, I say that, you need to understand, I, I hope you understand I hope you understand that just saying yes to Jesus is, is simply not enough. Because if you just say yes to Jesus and, and do nothing about it, don't nurture the word, don't, uh, don't weed the garden. If, if, you, uh, if you're just planting seeds among the thorns, eventually those thorns are going to win out. And Jesus explained it in verse 22 of Matthew 13. He said, it's like one who hears the word, but cares more for the ways of this world. It's like... Uh, 
we can come up here. And Steve, we are so excited that you said yes to, to wanting to join the church. And I'm so sorry you wanted to join back in, on March 15th. And then everything changed. And, but, but you stuck with us. And here you are today. And, and, and as he has said yes to, uh, to Jesus and to this church, friends, when we say yes to Jesus, we, we need to follow that up. And, and we need to, to stay true to, to who we say should be the authority in our lives. We want to be true to Jesus because, because there will always be competing voices in your life. There will always be those people who tell you uh, that this is the way it should be or, or you need to spend more time doing that. Uh, Jesus literally said that, that, we, uh, that we care more for the ways of the world, that we are uh, attracted or seduced by the lure of wealth. Or, or you could say status, or relationships, or whatever it may be. Jesus said, if you let these other things get in the way, they will eventually choke off uh, who we say we want to be. I still remember, uh, with, with a bit of a broken heart, someone who, who was so active in our church and so excited, but, but they let, it, it appeared, they let the, the ways of this world get in the way of following Jesus. They let uh, talking heads on, on TV and the, uh, the fanatical voices on the radio, they, they let the, the, uh, the language of politics be divisive in their life and, and lost track of following Jesus. We don't want to let the thorns in life choke out what God has in store for us. And so, remember, friends, the good news is that Jesus said there's another kind of soil. And it's not, uh, it's not the path, it's not the rocky soil, it's not the thorns and weeds, but it's, it's the good soil. Jesus said it's like uh, the seed that is planted in the good soil will bring forth grain. It's like the people who hear the word and understand it, or when they don't understand it, seek to understand it, that they, uh, they commit themselves to intentionally growing in their faith, to, uh, to understanding what God may want to say to us. I think it was the, the young lady, <laughs> young ladies, uh, the women who do the uh, uh, children's message a few weeks ago talked about uh, how important it is to read God's Word. And they said, you can just start anywhere, and, and you can. Just start uh, or maybe it was Rick Warren. I don't remember who said it. But he said, start reading. And, and you don't have to read for an hour every day. Just start reading. And do and you know how long you have to read? Read until God speaks to you. Read until God says something from that verse. And if it's the first verse, then stop and meditate on that. And if it takes 10 verses or 100 verses, keep reading until God speaks to you. But when the seed falls on the good soil... It falls into our lives, and we want to understand it. And this is the way you know that there is good soil going on. This is the way you know that, that God has prepared the soil in your life. John Wesley called that, by the way, he called it provenient grace, that God was working in your life even before you knew it. And we know that God is working in our lives. We know that the seed has been planted. We know it is taking root and about to flourish when it bears fruit. You see, our lives should be a testimony to the things we say are important. Our lives should give testimony to the things we say are our values. So Jesus told a lot of stories, and, and he told the story that Chris read today, the parable of the sower, and, and all of this is fine and good, but, but let's be honest, it's just another farmer story if we don't apply it to our lives. If we don't uh, decide that, uh, that we are going to say no to evil, if, if we don't uh, stand against evil, we will be like, the seed will be like that which is snatched away by the bird. The evil one will come and harden our hearts if we don't guard against evil in our lives. If, if, we, don't, uh, if we don't intentionally grow in our faith, we will be like that rocky soil. It's always going to be shallow and never prepared for the difficult times. You know, there's a, there's a family in our church going through some really amazingly difficult times right now. I, I can't even begin to imagine what it's like to be in their shoes. 
but I have been, as they have asked us to pray, I have been praying fiercely and I've been praying boldly. And I know there are so many others doing the same. But, but what strikes me is how in the midst of a storm, and they are in a storm, how, how they continue to talk about Jesus how they continue to uh, share, uh, like from my daily devotional today, this is what God spoke to me and I'm thinking, you're having devotions and God's speaking to you in this powerful way and, and if I were in your shoes, I'd just be a blubbering mess. They, they've, discovered, uh, they've discovered the good soil. They've been intently listening and allowing God's transforming power to be at work in their lives. We need depth in our lives because if we don't, if we're not intentionally growing in our faith, when the bad times come, when the difficult times come, we are going to wither and die. And we need, to be, uh, we need to not be distracted by the cares of this world, by the, the lure of wealth and, and status and things and relationships. We need to, to live our lives in such a way that they bear fruit, that people see in us the transformation we talk about and the transformation we promise to others. You see, Jesus wants to know how you will respond, what kind of soil there will be in your life. Jesus wants to know who's really listening. So would you pray with me? Gracious God, I, I know that there are times in my life when all of these things have been present. There are times when I have hardened my heart to you, and I pray for forgiveness. There are times when I have uh, not sought you with all my heart and so my, 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 my life has been, my, and my faith, shallow. And there are times when I allow other things, worries about money or, or status. Uh, there are so many times when I have allowed other things to, to hone in and, and, and take the place of my faithful walk with you. But Lord Jesus, I want... I want good soil in my life. I want to be a listener. I want to be a follower. I want, to, I want to hear you and obey you. I want to walk with you today and know that you're walking with me forever. Lord Jesus, continue to speak to us. Don't give up on us. Plant the seeds. And we pray that your Holy Spirit will nurture them in our lives, that we might grow to know you and love you for all of our days. We ask all of this in, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Friends, as you get ready to go today, we want to share a couple of quick things. There's an announcement sheet in the back. It's on the table uh, by the windows. We won't be uh, clogging the line today. Chris and I will be out by the coffee truck or uh, in the education building, but we won't be blocking the line. So grab one of those announcement sheets. Men, men, there's a yellow announcement uh, on a, a smaller flyer. We hope that you'll pick one of these up. It talks about a men's night out coming up in August. Uh, as you go, use the side aisles. Practice social distancing. If you have a minute, there's a sand bucket in your uh, pew or in the windows. If you would just spray one of those rags and wipe down the area that you're sort of touching, it would help us and more importantly, help the people who come in after you. It's a great way to show love to our neighbors. Remember to keep your masks on because we don't have the uh, Remember to keep your masks on, period. Because we don't have the uh, fellowship time downstairs, uh, we had a coffee truck last week. Some folks from the church said, this was so much fun, can we do it again? So they are sponsoring it. The drinks are on the house. Uh, we hope you'll take advantage of it, catch it on your way out. But now, would you rise and receive this blessing? Gracious and loving God, we pray that we might be good and receptive soil that the seed of your good news might plant deeply in our hearts and lives, that you might bring about transformation in who we are so that the lives we live will bear much fruit. Be with us today as we go forth from this place to invite, embrace, and empower all to be the family of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people at home and here said, Amen.
every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Sing holy. every voice in this place this morning declare that we will build our lives on the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you.
Stay safe, stay blessed. Continue to build your life on the firm foundation that is Jesus Christ. We'll see you guys next week. We love you.